When it came to politics, 2007 was a year of caution on the internet, in which candidates and elected officials were eager to avoid gaffes that could be rapidly disseminated for replaying and remixing on the World Wide Web. Clearly, lessons had been learned from the dramatic change in party control of the House and Senate in 2006 because of mistakes that lawmakers had made in understanding the possible embarrassing effects of computer-mediated communication, which were definitely contributing factors in the election. Because candidates were eager to court younger voters, they also showed some willingness to listen to advisors from different online communities, to respond to the jibes of internet celebrities, and to create parodic videos of their own. Many of the campaigns of presidential contenders use techniques first tried by the 2004 Howard Dean campaign, but political handlers soon discovered that the contentiousness that was valued for page views in the blogosphere could be trouble for appealing to mainstream audiences. In February, feminist bloggers Amanda Marcotte and Melissa McEwen were fired from the Edwards campaign after their past statements were used to depict them as liberal extremists. In contrast, the Romney campaign played it safe by portraying a pro-family image in their Five Brothers blog, although in June Internet Wags made much of Romney's treatment of the family's dog during a vacation with his children when they were young. Officials in the lame duck Bush administration also started blogs in 2007 which included official blogs from the Department of Health and Human Services and the State Department. In 2007, office holders elsewhere in the country followed the White House lead by using moderated internet chat with pre-cleared, pre-submitted questions as a substitute for live hearings or public meetings that protesters might disrupt. Some argued that the much-heralded CNN YouTube debates with the major Democratic and Republican candidates offered little interactivity for citizens and that the format made it difficult to raise complex issues or get beyond soundbite politics. Even with some of the questionnaires present in the audience, many felt that the event was too staged and still too much in keeping with the conventions of traditional one-to-many broadcasting. In their limited forays into 3D virtual worlds such as Second Life, Candidates also faced hostility from internet users. For example, griefers struck the campaign headquarters of John Edwards. Some of the most brutal internet satires were aimed at Hillary Clinton, who was shown in many mocking flash animated sites. Sometimes anti-Clinton critics used the exact same formats of parodies previously aimed at George W. Bush. In addition, email was often used in dirty tricks campaigning to circulate rumors and urban legends about candidates like Barack Obama. This year, presidential hopefuls expanded their campaigns to social networking sites such as MySpace and Facebook, even as legislation was moving forward to cut off access to such sites from publicly funded schools and libraries. Parody sites and social networks devoted to opposing particular candidates were also noticeable in politics on the internet in 2007. In academia, many expressed reservations in 2007 about the corporate opportunism of what was being dubbed Web 2.0 by promoters of social media software and the attitudes about gender, race, class, ownership in the public sphere that were being promulgated in both explicitly branded and viral advertising campaigns. In Congress, little progress was made on the issue of network neutrality and powerful committees have moved legislation forward for tougher enforcement of intellectual property laws despite the objections of many digital rights advocates. This is ironic because even presidential campaigns were reusing copyrighted materials on their online video sharing channels. As the year ended, the Federal Communications Commission approved new rules that allowed more media conglomeration, allegedly to offset newspapers' loss in market share to blogs and other forms of digital journalism. Meanwhile, television lost more of its audience as the Writers Guild of America continued its strike against film and television producers to demand residuals for shows distributed on the internet. Writers questioned how big media executives could tell their stockholders that web-based advertising was highly profitable and then claim that they were losing too much money to internet piracy 
to make profit sharing feasible. This is Elizabeth Losh of the University of California, Irvine, signing off in the beginning of the 2008 year.